A rhythm is everywhere. You see it in the smallest of nature. It's in the glistering of the sunlight in the water, but also in the larger movements of the planets in the universe. It has been fascinating me always, and everything I see, I hear, and the beauty of two birds giving call and response, in the way an elephant walks, sound of the train on the tracks. I love those kind of polyrhythms. It's the way we speak, it's sound waves coming from one person to the other by vibration, frequency, waves move in rhythm. It inspires directly to, to have this inner dance. My musical journey is one of rhythm. I'm a tabla player from Holland. Tabla is about rhythm, but it's much more about the poetry of rhythm than just rhythm as in cadence or a groove. I started my journey to this music after my high school in Holland. I had this inner calling to see something more of the world. Different cultures, different ways of thinking, different ways of interacting, different sorts of nature and step out of the laid out path. And I left hitchhiking Holland. I came through all these countries, Greece, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan. And after one year I came to India and I heard classical Indian music and it touched me very, very deeply. It was really like the universe exploded in rhythms and colors. And that gave me really the feeling like, I want to do this. I want to learn this. I want to be part of this music and part of this experience and this magic and this exploding universe. The tabla called me to India, and that's how my journey started. Every time I go to India, it strikes me the, the, the devotion that a lot of people have there, and that's ingrained in the culture. I've been going to India for the last many, many years now, doing a lot of concerts, a lot of tours, so I'm very grateful to be performing with wonderful artists all over India. But it's always short trips nowadays and just for the concerts. This journey I wanted to spend some time with a few of those masters that I knew or didn't know yet and really learn in the moment some of their repertoire, some of their language, some of their fine poetry, as we can say, and have some rhythmical conversations with the masters. <laughs> When I came to Cochin, I really needed to reconnect with Radhakrishnan, one of the greatest Gatan players of India, a master of the clay pot. The clay pot is a very special and wonderful instrument that has a very earthy, tonal quality to it. It's one of the simplest instruments. It's a water pot. It's been used in Indian classical music and it's very ancient. traveled together with the tabla for a long long journey and they they love talking to each other Tata.
Rhythm to me is movement and movement that connects. Nina introduced me to this wonderful Mridangan player and invited him and myself to their house, Suresh and Nina's house, which Suresh has designed. And I always feel very happy in that house because it's a very rhythmical house. It was really special to meet Vijayan because it was somebody I had never met before and a very powerful player and a very kind soul. that I was able to sit with him and play and enjoy together. That gave confidence, a very happy confidence in a joyful meeting and connection. From Cochin, I went to this beautiful art institute called Kala Mandalam. It's a very intense place with beautiful art to study full devotion and dedication. And there I went to meet the head of the Murdangam department uh, Mahesh Kumar. To play with Mahesh was a very intense experience because he didn't have much time and he's a very bold, fast character and he is very proactive in just getting things done, I think. He taught me this beautiful Muktayam, a South Indian structure, and we just went through it and I thought I had understood it and Already he started the solo, so I had no time to even put up the microphones, to put up anything. He just started the solo and our rhythmic conversation started. And then in the end of what we played, that's the final rhythmical uh, structure he, he taught in the beginning, he played it completely different, but I had to <laughs> follow and understand. To sit with Ravi is always inspiring because he is such a such an amazing artist and human being. Very friendly, beautiful soul. And he's a top, top, top virtuoso on the flute, which is a melodic instrument, but he is a master brain of rhythm as well. His playing is out of this world, literally. To me, he transports me out of this world. Which is very difficult, because when I'm playing tabla, I also have to be here on earth. We had the honor of having this beautiful Tavil player. Tavil is a temple drum from South India. So Tavil Raja was there. The experience was really, really very special. I mean, to sit at a temple, and not play for an audience, but play together music for music.
South Indian rhythm and rhythm in India, it's quite complex. But because of the nature of the music itself, even the simplest things, they sound maybe sometimes complex, but there's a beauty in simplicity. To me, that's really also one of the essential things I really lived in this whole journey. Uh, I mean, this is why I do music, because I love it deeply. Jayachandra was one of my gurus, one of my mentors of South Indian rhythm. He has a super sharp memory, so he remembered how I was as his student. We molded these old patterns into new things and I learned and it was very challenging, but joyfully challenging. To sit with a master and play with a master is a big job. And um, it went well and I really enjoyed. He is a joyful fellow and, and, and really beautiful soul also and an amazing master and, and God bless him <laughs> really because he is, he is on top of the game and he is very skillful. So after the recording of Jaya Chandra, as a surprise, his wife came in with her sister. They're the Kanchana sisters and they're a really well-known uh, duo of Carnatic singing. Krishna. They sang a beautiful Krishna bhajan, a devotional song for the great God and they brought in some beautiful sweetness of melody and devotion and joy of these female voices. <laughs> melody, it's like a very high, high, high meditation. And in Indian music, Especially in the alap, in melody, I think you can really go there. And then when the rhythm comes to me, it's like, it's the heartbeat. It brings us down to earth again and connects the heavens and the earth together. And that dance of spiritual bliss and earthly delight, it's there. In ancient India, they used the term Nad Brahma. Nad means vibration. Brahma is the all, everything that is. So everything is vibration, everything is rhythm, everything is sound. The whole universe is basically rhythm. Ta dim takita dim ta dim takita dim ta dim takita dim. <laughs>